My name is Daniel Rosenwasser. I'm the program manager on the TypeScript team at Microsoft. Uh, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about what's new in TypeScript 2.2 and what's coming out with TypeScript 2.3. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a minute as well. Uh, so what I kind of want to do is just think about for a moment what's changed within a year, right? Let's look back. Uh, me coming here to NGConf again this year uh, has been a kind of dramatically different feel. Uh, I've just gotten a different sense from people. Uh, primarily that just that people see TypeScript differently now. When I was here last year, a lot of people were a little bit uneasy. You know, people were still not quite used to the idea of using TypeScript as the primary language when writing Angular apps. Um, and, and so this was something that people kind of thought of as a turnoff when thinking about Angular. Um, but I think things are starting to change a little bit. Nowadays, I hear it more as an opportunity. The idea of using Angular is, a, you know, it's a plus that you get to use TypeScript in that respect. Uh, and so you start to see this more and more if you just kind of look at the adoption charts and whatnot. Um, and more so than just adoption, something that really spoke to me is uh, the recent Stack Overflow survey. Uh, if we look at the recent re Stack Overflow survey results, we see a couple of really amazing things. Uh, TypeScript reached the ninth most popular language on Stack Overflow through, through its survey. This is ahead of things like Ruby and Swift. And this is actually incredible, because this is not even just in the category of web programming languages, right? Um, if you do dive into web development languages, TypeScript reaches number seven. And not just that, it's the sixth most wanted language on the survey. And that's not it, right? It's also the third most loved language on the survey. Yeah. I think that's incredible. Because there's a saying, right? Uh, the creator C++, I believe, is credited with this. Uh, there's, I'll paraphrase it, there's two languages, two types of languages in the world. Those that people like to complain about and those that people use or don't use. Ah, shocks, I messed that one up. Uh, two types of languages, those that people like to complain about and those that people don't use, right? And somehow, TypeScript is, you know, loved and used, most wanted and most loved. Uh, and so I think that's pretty incredible. And that's something that I don't know if we could have gotten this far with uh, without the help of the Angular team and those working at Google and whatnot helping us out and really championing the language and the Angular community itself. So thank you all very much for helping us get to this point. Um, so what have we released in the last year? Well, we've had types of 2.0, 2.1, 2.2. Uh, that's actually a typo. Let me change that up. Oops. Uh, not quite yet, guys. A little spoiler alert. Um, so the thing I want to talk about is the duration that it takes for each of these to come out. Uh, with TypeScript 2.0, it took about seven months for us to get that thing out of the door. Uh, and you know that, that was something where we really wanted to give the best experience to all of our users. We wanted to get everything out of the door. We wanted to get async await down level out of the door. Um, and after that point, we realized you know, this, is, this is not the approach for how we want TypeScript to iterate on. Uh, it works for some teams, but given the demands of our user base, uh, we wanted to iterate more quickly. We wanted to have a more regular release schedule. Things were not consistent. So in TypeScript 2.1 and 2.2, we kind of got it down to two and a half months. That's our regular release cycle. And going forward, we're actually going with a new release cadence. So going forward, we're actually going to be releasing every two months. And in between those two months, uh, we're going to have a patch release as well. So it's something like think bug fixes, think like little things that help the VS Code experience occasionally. Uh, but you'll get a, a, a you know big featureful release every two months. And what this means is that you can think uh, you can you can think of TypeScript release schedule as a more predictable kind of train, right? You actually know when things are going to be coming. You know how to uh, understand what's going to be going out the pipeline. And also, that means that certain features aren't gated on other things, right? If, if, you need, if we have a really big feature we're working on, that doesn't mean that smaller things that are also important can't go out the door. So we think that this is, um, 
this has been a great experience. And one of the great parts about this is that because you'll get this rapid release cycle, uh, you'll never really have the opportunity to say, what has TypeScript done for me lately? Because you'll kind of always have this reminder every uh, few months that, hey, here's a new release of TypeScript. Um, but you know, since I already asked the question, what has TypeScript done for me lately, right? Uh, so 2.0 was a while back, um, and it, it got a lot of attention. But I, I want to focus starting with 2.1. So with 2.1, TypeScript 2.1, we actually really beefed up the type system a lot. I think it was a fairly large release in its own right. We brought down-level async await. We brought a lot of new operators that helped model different frameworks and libraries, as well as actually create a more uh, expressive type system that could be used for different meta programming uh, types of tasks and whatnot. And that's, that's the key of and map types um, feature right there. Uh, we also brought object rest and spread. And so 2.1 was one of my favorite releases. Um, and that's not to say that 2.2 wasn't also impactful. So when we looked at what we were going to do for 2.2, uh, we heard a lot of different things from different parts of the spectrum, right? We heard from users outside of the existing TypeScript community, outside the existing Angular community, saying, we want to be able to use TypeScript, but we're not able to just because the, power, the type system isn't quite uh, powerful enough. Um, and then we heard a lot of people from uh, the Angular community saying, hey, we really, you know, things are you know, pretty good, but we really want a higher level of tooling, right? We know that you can do better here. So uh, well, with TypeScript 2.2, we kind of focused on both of these. And the great part is that these, uh, the entire release actually impacted people on, um, you know, inside and outside of the existing types of community. So for instance, we have this uh, mix-in style pattern that we started supporting. Um, and we primarily did, did this for outside users, uh, folks like uh, Ember and Polymer and whatnot. But it turned out that this was actually helpful for the uh, Angular Material team as well. And I spoke to them a little bit ago, and they're taking advantage of it now too. So, Speaking inside and outside the community is actually really great for us. Um, to show off a little bit of the tooling that we have, I want to show you a quick sample here. So I have a shape.ts file. So this is an abstract class. It's called shape. It has a get area method on it, and that's abstract. So the idea is that anyone, any class that actually uh, extends shape needs to actually implement get area, or itself has to be abstract as well. So if we take a look at circle.ts, well, we don't have anything yet. But we can start scaffolding it out, right? And so I can start writing class circle, extends shape. Uh, and then I get a red squiggly. But I also get a light bulb if I go over that red squiggly. And right now, I get the option to import shape from shape. By the way, can everyone see this? Everyone good in the back? OK, great. Um, but then I still have this other red squiggly. And so I get a light bulb. And I can actually select that. And it gives me the option to implement the abstract class. So I get a scaffolded meth method right there. So I want to start writing my constructor. And all of a sudden, I get a quick fix, which asks me if I want to add the super call. And I do. And I was going to forget to do that anyway, so it's good that the tooling actually gave me that option. So what I'll do now is I'll take a radius for my circle. I can say this dot radius equals radius. And all of a sudden, I forgot to actually declare the property. Finally, we can actually implement get area, right? So we can say return math dot pi times radius squared. Whoops. And I'm using the exponentiation operator from ECMAScript. Uh, but I still have one last error. And it turns out I forgot to write this dot on my radius property. So at this level, TypeScript gives you the sort of completion and tooling that almost writes your code for you. And so you might, a lot, a lot of people I speak to also say, well, you know, I love, I love TypeScript, but I feel like it often pushes me to a more OO pattern. And I don't think that's the case. TypeScript tries to accommodate all coding patterns as you like. Um, and so if you like object-oriented programming, TypeScript is great for that. But we could write our circle uh, and shape kind of types uh, as, in, as a, in a more functional style, really. So let, let's actually try that out. So I'm going to create a circle type. I'm going to create a square type. And then for a circle, I might have a radius. Well, I will have a radius. 
And for my square, I'll have a side length. Uh, and I want to start writing my get area function, which will take a shape. I haven't defined shape yet, but I'll say that a shape is a circle or a square. This is actually a kind of you know, major difference between the styles of OO and functional programming, where you might have an open type, right? You might have the shape base class, which is open to extension, or you might have shape as a closed set of types, a circle or a square. Uh, so we might want to start, uh, we actually want to be able to differentiate between a circle and a square. So what it will do is we'll have a kind. We'll say it's a string. So the idea is that um, if I ever have a kind of circle, you know, the string circle, I'll actually have a circle. So I can do a switch uh, on shape.kind. And I can do case circle. And I can return math dot pi times shape dot. And now I realize I actually don't have radius available to me. And the problem is that we don't actually know for certain that we have a circle. Rather, we, we know for certain, but the type system doesn't. Uh, and this is actually a good thing, because what we want to do is we want to have the type system understand our understanding of the program as well. We, wanna, we want to uh, synchronize our understanding with the type system itself. So what we can do is we can say that a circle always has a string literal type. We can say that the kind is always going to be the string circle. And we can say that for a square, a kind, the kind field is always going to c contain the string square. And all of a sudden, if I dot off of this thing, I actually do get the radius. Uh, and I can square that. And more than that, I can also get completion in here. So now, in my switch case block, I actually get completion for both circle and square, the strings. So we actually support a more functional style of writing code as well. The idea is that TypeScript should support the patterns that you know and love in JavaScript today. So I hope that gives you kind of an idea of what we've been working on and, and the sort of things that we try to support inside and outside of the community. Um, for what's coming in TypeScript 2.3, um, there's a lot of great stuff. Uh, and I'm very happy to talk about all of it. I can only cover some of it because of the time constraints that we have. So one big thing is language service extensibility. Uh, and that is something that we've been working hard with the Angular team on. And I think that you should all check Chuck's talk out tomorrow about this. Uh, this is going to be the stuff that really makes the editing experience in templates amazing for using TypeScript and Angular together. Uh, so definitely check that talk out if you can. Uh, more than that, we also have a bunch of new language features and a lot of stuff that we've, we've done to actually try to make it easier to transition. Uh, so one thing I'd like to talk about is true iterable support. So iterators and generators. When we came out with TypeScript 2.1, we released downlevel async and await. And that was fantastic. People love that. Uh, but unfortunately, we weren't able to deliver generators. And basically, one of the tough calls that we had to make was, uh, if you support generators, then you also anticipate that everything that supports generators are also going to work. So for instance, if you use for loops, uh, if you use uh, array spread syntax and whatnot, uh, the expectation is that you'll actually get uh, full generalized support for iterators. And unfortunately, that what, ha what that means is that every for loop that you write has to be rewritten into this more general construct. Um, it's not necessarily as fast. It's, it, it actually adds a little bit of bloat to your code. And so a lot of our users actually weren't concerned with that. And so with TypeScript 2.3, you'll be able to use a new fly called downlevel iteration to try to, to actually get full support for generators and iterators. And in addition to that, we're also going to have async generators and async iterators coming with TypeScript 2.3 as well. Um, speaking of a new option, uh, a lot of people start new TypeScript projects with stricter flags. It makes sense because the stricter your flags, uh, the better TypeScript tends to be able to help you out. And so the thing is, we wanted to make it easier to just start a new project. We wanted people to just be able to say, I want the strictest stuff. And so from now on, you won't have to do this if you just want the strictest options. We have a new flag called strict, right? It just does what you want. It gives you the strictest possible options. And we believe that this is going to be a flag that carries the best uh, coding, um, yeah, 
the best coding styles that we can advocate for uh, and that TypeScript will give a be the best experience for going forward. Uh, we'll also be introducing potentially new features that go into the strict flag. And so if you ever want to opt out of one of those new features, you can explicitly list them in your tsconfig file. One, last thing, one other thing is generic defaults. So let's say that you have some API, right? It is generic. You have some type that's generic on T. Um, and so you may want to generalize this a little bit down the road. You might want to add another type parameter. You want to have another uh, method on here that returns a U. But unfortunately, if you've ever written some API of foo, in this case, uh, adding a new type parameter actually breaks things. So now anyone who ever used this is broken. So what we've introduced is generic defaults, right? They're, this is not the only place they're useful for, but this is extremely useful when you're writing a new DTS file. So basically, earlier when we wrote some API of foo, um, we could have written, this basically desugars into some API of foo and object, because anyone using it wouldn't have cared otherwise before. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about really quickly is the effort that we're making to try to make it easier to adopt new JavaScript project or existing JavaScript projects into TypeScript. So last year, I showed off this file called shipping.js. And the concept was that you, it would come with a bunch of, you know, there are a bunch of these errors in here. Uh, they're not things that would pop out to your eye necessarily. But the thing is, we're trying to make it easier to transition from JavaScript to TypeScript. And so one of the things that we can do is we can actually use this allow.js flag, which is something that allows us to mix and match TypeScript and JavaScript code together. Um, and then we can actually add a quick comment up here. And all of a sudden, I get the red squigglies that we all know and love, right? Uh, and so this is kind of a softer form of checking for your JavaScript files. This makes it so that you can catch the errors that TypeScript is going to catch earlier on before you do a full migration. So this is something we're currently experimenting with. Uh, we'll have an RC out soon that you can try it out with, and we'd love to hear your, your feedback for it. Um, and just as a heads up, you know, none of this stuff is necessarily secretive. We try to keep all of this out in the open. It's on our roadmap. Um, so we're always, well, you know, we're always trying to hear people out and trying to be open and transparent about our process. So in the future, you know, as always, keep in touch. Uh, we're on GitHub. Uh, get me on Twitter. Uh, the TypeScript Playing account is listening. And uh, I hope that uh, you all have a great time using TypeScript 2.3.